Hello. <laughs> Congratulations to the New York Liberty. The New York Liberty has been here in forever. Y'all can't do it. Y'all can't do this. Y'all can't come and do anything. Y'all just, y'all just here. New York Liberty played some great basketball. You know what they did? Defensively, they played a good game. See, all y'all do is brag about offense. It ain't about offense. You can score. Anybody can score. Like Charles Barkley said, a knucklehead can get about 13 points. You can. Now, the thing that they did great was they um the 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 way they defended everybody. Jo was off tonight, and that was due to the defense by um Van Slu, Feebich. Feebich played some good defense on Kelsey Plum. Frustrated Kelsey Plum. Um, <coughs> I can't think of the other girl name, but she came off the bench on um, Burke. Burke played some good defense. Thornton. This is the thing I said about the New York Liberty. Jaquel Jones is a good, sorry person. <laughs> That's just what she is. But Jaquel made me proud yesterday. She didn't put up a lot of points, but she did what I've been wanting her to do. Establish dominance down low. Yeah, Asia had more points. Yeah, Asia had more rebounds. But Jaquel actually had a better game. Is I don't look at stats. I look at what you do in the paint. Jaquel Jones' defense in the paint, her rebounding, her ability to get the ball to the shooters was incredible. Stewie was incredible. Now, she did go kind of silent near the end, but a bunch of big shots by the supporting cast really uplifted the Liberty. This is how the Liberty is going to win a championship. It's not about Stewie. It, it's not about Sabrina. It's not about Jaquel. It's about what the supporting cast does. Feebich had an incredible game. And I've been I love Feebich the whole year. I think she's underrated. Um, I think she's a rookie, but she's an older rookie, you know. But she's having a hell of a season. Um, they played a great game. They they attacked the inside. They dominated in the paint. This is how the Liberty are going to win it all. You don't have to settle for threes all game. It's like <laughs> it's like the Aces and the Liberty, they switch places. The Aces are usually the one dominating down low, attacking the basket. This game, they just kept shooting threes. The only person going to the hole was Hayes and... um. Hayes and Asia and then down the stretch Asia couldn't even really touch the ball which I didn't understand that at all like why wouldn't you give it to your best player down the stretch but um Kelsey Plum went cold she got frustrated because Feebich was in her head um J.O. was cold this game but that's not gonna happen too often J.O. will bounce back next game but the New York Liberty took it to him the Liberty punched him in the mouth they established that, look, we're here to play. We're here. Now what? We're here to play. We don't care who you are. Yeah, you guys are the big bad aces, but they had to win that game because they needed to psychologically feel like, okay, we could play with this team. Everybody's like, the aces need this. The aces need this. The aces don't need this game. The aces are the defending champs. The only thing the Aces need to work on is down the stretch, they got to get to the basket. You got to stop settling for threes. This is why I keep telling people. See, people are so enamored with the three for, I don't know, for whatever reason. That is a low percentage shot. A three-pointer is a low percentage shot. It's a low percentage shot. The closer you are to the basket, the higher your chances are to make it. And this is what I'm trying to tell people. 
They're so enamored with with stats. It's not about stats. Sometimes a person who gives you five, seven and two or maybe five, five and five or maybe give you five, one and one. They may have had the impact in the game. They may have done something to establish the momentum in the game. Jaquel Jones didn't do well from a statistic standpoint, but it was about the intangibles. She got the extra rebound. She got the offensive board. She kicked it out to the shooters when they needed to make a big play. Down the stretch, that pass to um, Thornton in the corner again. Thornton is showing that, man, she may be, you know, Hamilton. I like Hamilton, but, man, Thornton is looking like Thornton and Burke have been playing great. And also Sato's sister. I can't think of her name, but Sato's sister, she came in for a little bit, but she's going to be key down the stretch. The, the, the Liberty have a team. Vandersloot played some excellent point guard. She outplayed Gray and Plum and all of them at the point. She was getting everybody in position, and that's how you run the point. The point isn't about running everywhere, throwing all these flashy passes, trying to impersonate Pete Maravich, shooting all these logo threes. That's not point guard. That's what I call playmaking. <laughs> that's not a point guard. That's a point guard. Watch Vandersloot. That's a point guard. Chelsea Gray did some great work down the stretch. I just think Chelsea Gray was... She was trying to score and facilitate, and that's not good. You can't do two things at once. You got to be either the facilitator or you got to be the score. Isaiah Thomas um, for the Detroit Pistons back in the day would always say, well, me and Joe, we, 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 we decided who would be the facilitator depending on the game. Isaiah said, if I got it going this game, I done got some good shots in, I'm making it. Joe would turn into the point guard. But if Joe got it going, psh, I'm hitting Joe all game. I'm the point guard. And that's something you have to establish between your guards. Like if Kelsey, if, if, if J.O. doesn't have it going, J.O., you got to turn into the facilitator. You got to start going to the basket. You got to start making it easier for everybody. This is why I like guards who are able to do both just in case this is something Derek Fisher was for the, for the Lakers, Derek and Kobe both could play the point if they wanted to. Kobe could have played the point anytime he wanted to. He played the point for the first three championship teams. I don't know why everybody say Ron Harper. I'm like, dude, Ron Harper brought the ball up. <laughs> the guy who played the point was Kobe. Kobe was giving the plays to everybody. <laughs> like go back and watch. I watched these games. I was in high school at that point. So I know I, I watched because everybody used to hate Kobe. And I just be like, man, Kobe kind of nice. <laughs> I'm like, Kobe's saving everybody. What are you talking about? Oh, he got Shaq. I'm like, yeah, but Kobe's ball. And like, he's destroying everybody on the perimeter. But that's another story I'm going to tell. I'm going to tell that story later. But let's stay on this game. Do I believe that the... <clears throat> the investigations are getting to the aces could be but this is what you're made of you got to block it out um the whole season Kobe and Shaq were dealing with the Kobe was dealing with the Colorado situation but they got back to the championship that showed you how mentally tough Kobe was that showed you how much of a, a of how he didn't let that affect his team so what? Hamby suing. That's on Becky Hammond. Now, do I believe Becky's going to lose her job? No. Why would Becky lose her job? Becky did a Popovich. Both of them tried some tactics their way. The person that they were talking to turned out to be sensitive <laughs> to that sort of thing. It's not their fault. It's a miscommunication thing. She said something. She shouldn't have said it. That's why I said, don't say something. Just think about it. Me, I just blurt the shit out. I'm going to just be real with you. Becky, at the time, they should have just handled the situation differently. But it has been a problem. Then they're under investigation for the money thing. 
So they're getting hit from all sorts of angles and they're trying their best to try to tear this team down. They're against them. They really want the New York Liberty. I'm going to be real with you. They really want the New York Liberty to be the faces because you got the white girls and then you got New York, Las Vegas. They all sisters. <laughs> you got two white girls on the team. <laughs> So that's what they want. They really want the Liberty. But the Aces, they're going through it. Now, do I think they need to trade somebody? Yes. If they can go get Stevens from L.A., that would be a good fit. I would get her. I would try to get her. Um, If not, if, if I can't get her, hell, I would look to try to make a trade. I would look to try to see if I can get Nalissa Smith. Um, I think Nalissa Smith would be good in that sixth man option coming off the bench for them. I would try to get Nalissa Smith from Fever. I don't think she's happy there. I think she would be better away from there because I think they misuse Nalissa a lot and they give her the blame all the time. White girl can't get no blame in Indiana. You know that. <laughs> so, if I'm the Aces, I would try to go get Stevens or I would try to go get Nalissa because I think Nalissa at that four would give a lot of space to um, Angel. I mean, not Angel, <laughs> Asia, and that would open them up. I think they ought to do that if I'm them. That's what I would do. You know, or I would see if I could... Um, if you can't get them, shoot. I'm trying to think who else is out there. I would see if I can get one of them bigs from Atlanta. They're very good, but they're not. Atlanta, to me, is a better Chicago. To me, they got the, the rugged pieces, but they fit because they got a point guard. <clears throat> Jordan Canada played outplayed Scholar the other night at the point guard position. Scholar was scoring, but down the stretch, he didn't control the pace. Point guards, I don't judge off of their assist or, or stats. It's off of who controls the pace better. This game, Vandersloot outplayed Gray because she outplayed her from a pace standpoint. That's what I look at as a point guard. Not no goddamn assists. Everybody can get an assist. I've seen James Harden get 15 assists. Does that make him a point guard? No, he's a playmaker. Can he control pace? Yes, he can. But he's mainly a two guard who just so happens to have point guard skills. People got to understand, Jalen Rose said it best. Shout out to Jalen Rose. This is why I love Jalen Rose. Jalen Rose said it, okay, the positions were made for a novice to follow the game. You understand what I'm saying? Just because you have a power forward doesn't mean he got to get 10 rebounds or, or, or 15 rebounds. He could probably give you 19, 20, and 4 or 20 and 5. Hell, you could have a center who can give you probably 8 and like 20 rebounds. <laughs> that, that doesn't mean he sucks. That just means that's his skill set. A point guard like Russell Westbrook can give you 20 and 10. Is he a point guard to me? No, he's more of an off guard. But in his case, he's right. Because of his height, I'm going to put him at the point. Now, you got Tony Parker who averages 20 and 5. And then come up big down the stretch. So it's not about your stats. It's about how your system is ran. On that Spurs team, Tim Duncan was the point. He was the point of attention. Because when he got the ball, everybody was moving around him. Tim Duncan's passing and his ability to, 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 to slow the pace down and make it into a crawl was one of his specialties. That's why the Spurs used to beat everybody all the time because they used to slow the game down. 
people be like, oh, my God, this is hard to watch. No, it's not. If you're a fan of basketball, you love the Spurs. See, y'all are so used to the flashy shit. The New York Liberty, they're not flashy. Brianna Stewart did what she was supposed to do. She got the rebound. She did the extra stuff. Jaqua did the extra stuff. Their shot was off. They were moving it around. The supporting cast stepped up more than the Vegas Aces um, cast. Hayes is balling, but listen, Gustafsson got to go. Gustafsson, for some goddamn reason... <laughs> For some damn reason, Gustafsson be playing like, like straight pie. How are you overseas balling? You were overseas balling. Now you get back to the States, you playing like apple pie? Man, get out of here. <laughs> we ain't got time for that. So we got to trade her and get Stevens to me. I would get Stevens or I would get Nalissa Smith from the Fever. Now people are going to be like, why get Nalissa Smith? Because I don't like Indiana. It's not about the team. I don't like the state of Indiana. I don't like those states like Indiana, Iowa, Oklahoma. I don't like them. Kansas, don't like them. I don't like them. Montana, don't like them. I don't like them. I don't like them. Everybody looking like, why you don't, you know why I don't like them. I think Nalissa Smith would be good for him because Nalissa Smith is a great offensive rebounder. Not a good one, a great one. And she can hit that mid-range shot and she can hit the three and she has hustle in it. She has energy and she can run the floor. She could kill in transition. So I would try to get her or I would try to get Stevens. That's what I would do. <clears throat> That's what I would try to do. In my opinion, that's my opinion. That's what I would do. Or get an Izzy from Chicago. Like they need somebody off the bench who's going to score and give problems. You understand? But the Liberty played a great game. This was the best game they played, in my opinion, all year. Um, from a statistical standpoint, no. But from an impact and not not just the impact, but from a team standpoint, <clears throat> they set the tone. They set the tone. They um played a great game. Now, when Hamilton comes back, they're going to be even more dangerous because you can change Hamilton, Thornton, um, Burke, um, Sabati. I mean, Sato's sister, I can't think of her name. I got to know her name because I don't want to disrespect her. She's playing. She's she's doing good. Um, her defense was pretty good. Like she didn't stop Asia, but she kind of slowed her down a little bit. You're not going to stop Asia, but if you make it difficult for her, you'll be straight. So. So that's that's about it. I'm heading to the movies today. I got to um I got to do something on my other channel guys so I'm going to have some content for you guys on the um other channel I got to talk about the Bo DeMaio I'm going to probably go live on the DZ report and we're going to talk about the Bo DeMaio situation which I'm calling cap on but we're going to talk about that um I got a video coming on Rumble make sure you guys follow me on rumble.com um, that's news Patreons. I put a video up last night talking about the, um, the Chicago sky situation and what's going on. Um, and let me know what you guys like on there. I'm also going to put something else on there today. I'm going to be at work today. I got me some rest. I'm finna go to the movies. Then I'll give um I'll probably give my review later. Um, I'm probably gonna go to the movies today and tomorrow. Now the game come on today, the storm and fever. I'll watch that later. But I'm listen, I do not <laughs> listen. 
I just don't be seeing what y'all see in Caitlin Clark. And it's not me trying to hate, bro. I'm, I'm really not hating. I, she just remind me of another Steve Nash, like white person who can play getting over glorified. That's all. No diss. She can play. I mean, I would put her on my team if I could, but I just think y'all over glorify her. Not saying she overrated. Y'all just over glorify her. Like she's the coming of Christ or something. It's, it's a complex, you know. But I'm not surprised. They did this to Larry Bird. They did this to Dirk. They did this with Luca. They've done this with plenty of, excuse me, Tom Brady, all of these guys. But Brady can play. He won. <laughs> you know, he won. But though Dirk won. Luca still got to win. Bird won. So we'll see. But check it out. I'll, I'll do a review on that game later. Um, I think the Sky played a Mercury today. I don't know if that game's coming on TV. If it does, cool. If it doesn't, oh well. Um, but Las Vegas, they have to, um, to me, make a move. They've got to get that bench going. I, I don't think the starters need to be replaced. Everybody in the starting lineup is okay. You need a bench. And this is why I tell people, it's not about what you got in the five. I think they need to go make a run for Alyssa, for, for Nullis, excuse me, either Nalissa Smith or Stevens. They need that because they could come off the bench and they could dominate in that six man role. Or you could start them. And I would put Stokes ass on the bench <laughs> because Stokes didn't give you nothing. Like even when she's not scoring, she doesn't do nothing else. And y'all be dissing Angel like I'm like, dude, when Angel ain't doing good field goal percentage wise, she's playing defense and she's rebounding and she's stealing the ball. Stokes does not do nothing to me. I don't know what Becky sees in Stokes. That's why when they picked up Jessica Carter, I, I think that's her name. I'll just say Jessica because I don't know her last name. You didn't even give her a chance. I would have gave her a chance. You kept Stokes. I'm like, why? You could have gave the rookie Jessica a chance. Jessica could have probably got you about four to six boards this game. That were crucial. You going to go with Stokes? Stokes don't do nothing. What do you see in Stokes? I don't see what she's seeing in Stokes. I just don't see it. Now, somebody tell me in the comment section, what is it about Stokes? Tell me what it is, because the Liberty was destroying her on the boards and they were destroying her in the paint. Jaquel took her to school in the paint. So I'm I'm trying to figure out what she got on Becky Hammond. She probably got some bodies buried somewhere where she know what Becky finna do. So I need to know because I don't see it. Like, and I'm not even trying to diss. I really don't see it. I don't see what. The hoop lie is about Stokes. I would have got rid of Stokes a long time ago or put her at the end of the bench as an extra big man I need. And Gustafsson, like I said, what is she doing? You went overseas, balled out, now you back. <laughs> this is what I'm saying, man. It's like, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, we'll see. Things might change. Things might change. Things might um be different. We don't know, but I don't see it. But shout out to the Liberty, man. Brianna Stewart was balling this game. They got up to, they, they were down. They were down at, I think, 10, almost 12, and then they just came back, which was beautiful. Brianna Stewart running the trans, running the lane. Then at the end, hitting those two big shots to close out the game. You saw that move she did. Took her, took her down low, did the turnaround, fadeaway free throw line. I said, ooh. <laughs> Listen, I got a video coming up. Brianna Stewart is better than Diana Taurasi. I got her higher on my list than Taurasi. I, I'm sorry. Listen, I, listen. Diana Taurasi is not messing with her. 
I always thought Lauren Jackson was better than Tarasi. But I don't know. Y'all let me know in the comment section. I got Stewie over her. I'm sorry. I got Stewie over um Diana Taurasi and Lauren Jackson. I don't know about Lauren Jackson. Because Lauren Jackson got a special place in my heart. Lauren Jackson was a baller. I remember she was on NBA Street. <laughs> I used to be killing dudes with Lauren Jackson on NBA Street. They'd be like, who is this white girl? I'm like, that's Lauren Jackson. See, that's a white girl. Sue Bird, even though I don't like her comments or like her outside the court, Sue Bird was a player. And to me, that's just, you know, Caitlin's a Sue Bird. Got a got a three-point shot, but Sue Bird could was a beast, <laughs> especially in the fourth quarters. Sue Burr went to school. <laughs> so it's like, I don't know. I'm just saying, I didn't, I didn't seen. It's not about white or black, but they make it about white or black. But if you're going to talk about somebody white, Brianna Stewart, way better career, way better college career for natties. I think two or three WNBA championships. Come on. So I think Brianna is better than Tarasi. I've said that before. Like, this white girl better than Tarasi. I saw her at UConn. I said, yeah, she's better than Tarasi. <laughs> I'm sorry. Y'all be bragging about Tarasi and LeBron with these longevity shits. Nah. I don't care about longevity. I care about nigga. We on the basketball court and I and you could play and we just throw a four out there and just bring you out there. Stewie giving all on the business. Stewie is giving Tarasi the business. And Stewie, sh she's making a case. She <laughs> you might be having her in the MVP conversation again. She's making a case, but I'm sorry. I'm taking Stewie over um Tarasi. I'm sorry, dawg. I, I, Tarasi's probably the better scorer, better shooter, but the better all-around player defensively, too. Stewie play defense. Stewie plays defense. So, I'm just saying. Y'all let me know. But I think Brianna Stewart... It's better than Diana Taurasi. But yeah, thank y'all for listening, man. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share this. Hit that notification bell to select all to receive upcoming notifications. Now, if you guys love what you hear, you can donate to the page via Zelle or my cash app. That's in the description box. Um, you also, you guys can also um, super chat when the video's live or premieres. You guys can super chat. Um, you guys can also, um, the Patreon, you can sign up $3 a month. Um, we drop different things on there. Plus we got a community tab on there where you guys can interact with one another. Y'all can debate. Y'all can go at it. Hell, if y'all want to curse each other out, y'all can. You're not going to get blocked or banned. It's your platform. The reason I made it $3 is because I understand everybody's hardship financially Plus, I'm just on there just being extra. It's nothing. It's not like Carcino. Carcino, in my opinion, he making it 25 on his Patreon. But Cino should have. Cino could have made it $50, like for real or more. Like the information he gives us on there is crazy. Shout out to Carcino for life. But my Patreon, I'm not. I'm just doing it because I got extra stuff that you may not see that I can't put on YouTube because when I put those videos on YouTube, they mess with it. They they limit my monetizations on those. So I wanted to make that. And plus, they've been hating on my, my numbers. They'll take subscribers from me or then they'll add them back. They'll take views from. I had a video at 120 like the first day they took. They dropped it to 100. I'm like, so. I'm not making stuff up, people. I watch my numbers every day. So the Patreon be popping. We got the fantasy draft. Guys, we only got one, maybe two more weeks. Hold on.
Let me see. Yeah, we got one more week, guys, and then we're at the draft. I'm closing it off. If you're not in, you're not in. It's $30 to enter. So you pay your $30, but if you win the whole fantasy draft, I mean, excuse me, if you win the whole fantasy league, you get your $30 back, including everybody else $30. We put the $30 in a pot, and then whoever wins, take that money home. And you get a trophy. Okay? And you get a trophy. Mr. CM23, I didn't forget about you. I'm going to send you something. Just give me some time, but I'm going to send you something for your support. You've been a big supporter for real. You really look out for me. And I really appreciate you, my brother. Um, also, guys, we got the music. You guys can go to the, we got two new C, We got two CDs out. Change the channel. And we got no more wax sheet. Those links are in the description box. Click those links, listen to the album, get your boy views up. That's the that's that's the that's the family. Mutant styles, cracking AMG, you know, me, you know, check them out. Also, I'm on Rumble. Follow me on Rumble. Um, DZ Report. Make sure you guys check that out. You know, the DZ Report, we talk about entertainment, movies, and everything. On Rumble, we talk about life, talk about the news, different type of things. Patreon, I'm just extra with stuff. I'm just extra. <laughs> so, you know, support your boy Paige. Support, you know, nothing but love for everybody. Like I said, shout out to Carcino for life. Shout out to um, Scrub Zero, Lil Bro. Um, Jag Sports with Jose Rodriguez. I just found out the other day, Jag stands for just another guy. So that's that's cool. Um, <laughs> I was confused. Uh, I think Sino talked about that sound like the Jaguars. I said, yeah, I was like, yeah, when Jose became a Jazz fan, this ain't no diss, Jose. I, I got love for you, my G. I was the same as Sino. I thought that meant the Jaguars, so I'm slow. I'll take it. I apologize, but I thought it was that. Um, shout out to who did it this time. Um, shout out to One True Emperor. That's my boy there, too. Um, Leaf Diggy, you know, hope he's doing well. The Mac Mizzle Show, happy birthday to his daughter, man. We pray she don't become a LeBron fan like you. I pray. I'm going to try to get her some Kobe stuff, some Penny Hardaway stuff, and, you know, I'm going to get her some real stuff. I ain't going to give her that propaganda shit. <laughs> <laughs> get us some Allen Iversons. <laughs> um, the Mac Mizzle got a great channel, guys. Check that out. Um, Bear Theater, Bear be on there whooping ass. When I get my PS5, I'm gonna be one of his victims. <laughs> I try to play him on there. Um, shout out to Bear, man. Much love, love Bear. Bear's Bear's been a, a, a fan of mine since I was on Cenos. You know, shout out to Bear. Um, Showtime Sports, man. Showtime got some great content. Shout out to him. You know, he makes some great videos. I love how he see this is the Caitlin Clark fans that I have respect for. Showtime admits I'm a Caitlin Clark fan. I came in liking Caitlin Clark. He grew into being an Angel Reese fan. But when he talked about Caitlin Clark, he don't diss Angel Reese. When he talk about Angel Reese, he don't diss Caitlin Clark. That's why I love Showtime Sports. Make sure y'all subscribe to him because he keeps it real, keeps it a buck. Not no Ben Daniel podcast or Mickey Facts or no, no Fly Hippie, Bishop, Pope, or whatever the hell, P. Frank and Charger to the game. All them are lames. Lames. <laughs> you know? Shout out to Fulan Speaks. You know, Fulan talks about some real stuff. Fulan Speaks Sports. Shout out to him, man. That brother be, be doing some things. Um, shout out to Sess Talk Sports. Sess Talk Sports. Real one. Auntie Real. Auntie, I love Auntie's energy, man. She keeps it a buck. One of the realest people I've ever seen on YouTube. Um, Quita loves sports. Quita. You know, she do a lot of glazing, <laughs> but she makes great content from the heart. You know, she's one of them. Great content. Make you make sure you support her page. Um, I think that's about it. Is that it? Oh, yeah. 
the J Spot Network, man, that's the beautiful J Spot, man. Look, I'm trying to holler at J Spot. J Spot don't know. <laughs> I'm a wine and dine everything. <laughs> she don't know, but shout out to her too. You know, we out. Deezy.